RG, who is the MD and CEO of Unilever Nepal, our keynote speaker. His session will talk about sales optimization through digital transformation. Um, Mr. Amlan Mukherjee has been working as the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Unilever Nepal Limited starting April 2020. He has 30 plus years of experience in this industry, spanning through general management, brand management, sales and marketing roles, working in different capacity in global roles, as well as in South Asia. His journey in this organization started in the frontline sales and later moved to core marketing. He has also led different businesses in Unilever. And uh, currently, he is also the part of Unilever Global Team along with Unilever South Asia Leadership Team. I also had the privilege to be with him a few days ago for a Unilever event where a digital transformation was also, I think, a key part of that concept as well. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together in welcoming Ms. Tamlan Mukherjee on stage. Good morning, good morning to you all. Mm, and thanks for the kind uh, introduction. I'll change the introduction a bit before I start. I joined this organization uh, 31 years back and I borrow from my uh, something which my CEO of Unilever, Mr. Nitin Paranjave, some of you must have heard him, my uh, ex boss. He said a uh, couple of years back, he said that whatever we do, I can be the CEO, I can be the CEO and all. But the first thing, what I am for the organization, my first role is to sell. Second role is to sell. And third role is to sell, right? Everything else, understand the uh, role and I joined this organization 31 years back as a trainee territory sales in charge, right? So everything and I, what I have realized and I tell to my team that every other function, and I'm sure there are people from all, all functions sitting over here, so don't take it in other way, but every other function is a support function. The revenue generation of the organization is being done by the sales team. Right. And myself, after 31 years, I must say that I feel privileged to being part of the sales team first for my organization. Even now, when I go to any town and a couple of my colleagues are here, I tell them never say that I am visiting a town. Say that I am working in that town. Right? It has lots of difference. Because we as salespeople, we don't visit, we work. Right? Uh, it has nothing to do with digital. I thought that being part of one of you, I should share uh, something uh, before I start my um, <coughs> presentation. I shall start my presentation by telling you a story a story which happened uh, some five, six months back, and it can bring alive a fantastic way something which I'm going to speak in the next 35, 40 minutes. Uh, any of you over here or some of you over here uh, from automobile industry? I'm as assuming some of you will be, I, ca I can see some of the hands. So I, while I stay in Kathmandu, my daughter stays in Bombay. Right? So I, we decided that I should buy her a car because she has to go to office. Some of those times, the Bombay traffic is extremely, extremely sad. And from my, where we stay to her office, there is no direct train. So we decided to buy a car. Uh, so we approached a certain company. We had a preference. Uh, and the sales gentleman over there had a very brief informal discussion with me. He asked me about what's my name, what do I do, what's my daughter's name, what does she do, 
and what is the purpose of the of buying this car right and then invited us to come to the uh, showroom on the next saturday when we went to the showroom me and my daughter yes my wife was also there uh, when we went to the showroom so here was me and my daughter and there was a sales person first and foremost my question to all of you is that can you tell us what was the role difference between me and my daughter in that particular transaction we went to buy a car i went there i was buying the car for my daughter so i went there and my daughter so what's the role difference between the two first and foremost and this is something which all of you should remember is that the role difference is that my daughter is the consumer and i am the shopper right it is not necessary always that the shopper and the consumer are the same right you buy a toy for somebody close are you the consumer no you are not the consumer what you are you are the shopper you are shopping so in most of the cases the sales people deal with the shopper and the consumers are a subset of the whole thing there can be cases where the consumers are also consumers are shoppers right now what happened is that this guy while he was giving his sales speech he first approached my daughter and told her that ma'am you work for ogilvy ogilvy head office is in x place which is 35 kilometers away from where you stay you work in the creative department it means that you leave office late at that point of time coming home takes around 1 and 1/2 hours to 2 hours depending on the traffic uh you must be very tired and then he suggested a car which is a automatic car which is a good maneuverable car which was not of a very high price to her and told her what are the advantages of her driving that car while going to the office and coming back and i said some of it then he approached me and then he told me sir i believe that you already have a car so this is one car which has a high resale value and you stay in kathmandu your daughter stays in bombay so the service center from your home is only 4 kilometers away and these are the other facilities which you bring on to facilitate the car i was so impressed and surprised this guy during the first discussion you know what he did later on when i checked he went to both our linkedin profiles and checked our profile and found out what do you do right and created a sales story which was one for the consumer who is my daughter and one for the shopper which is me for me it is all about efficiency if there is a problem for the car how will my daughter should not run from pillar to post and so much so that's what is important for for me and for my daughter it is about the style of the car the maneuverability of the car the ease, ease of driving of the car you know and he created this story by visiting our linkedin pages both of us we have we are in linkedin and which has open pages right now what does it what does it tell you before i explain to you and i'll explain to you and i'll tell you how do i take it how many of how many of you heard of this term called big data i'm sure sir you were you have but let me try and explain you in a very easy terms what is big data uh, so say suppose mm, a oil company has found that there is a store of oil there is a 
as a huge oil field in Venezuela, and which is below the surface. You know, that oil has no price, no value. Clear? When there is a, when they extract the oil, they process the oil, right? And they make it user ready, then that oil has a value. Exactly like this, in our everyday life, there are millions, billions, and trillions of data which are getting passed on in what we do. Whether it is the media, uh, the media platform, the digital platform, whether you are using your social media, everything, when you are traveling and if you have kept your GPS on, your location on, there are billions and trillions of data, and you, you must, this is a very, uh, this thing, that 90% of the data which has been created in this world has been created in the last 10 years, right? Only 10% was been created before that, right? So a huge set of data which is get, getting created, which is called big data. Now that big data is useless. You understand? Because what will you do with so much of data? What will you do to understand that where from where to where we have traveled in the in three days back? What this guy did was that he picked up from the big data, the actionable data, and used that, used that for his sales call and made a successful sales call, right? That to me is the essence of digital in sales. The world is changing. The usage of dig digital is changing, is happening at a huge, huge pace. And the sales system previously used to depend on individual skill now needs to change and get into a way where it is much more analytics based, logic based, information based, and they are already ready with what they want to do or what they want to approach. So this is more or less what I kind of try and tell you. And I must tell you that some of the examples will be Unilever examples. I don't want to quote from other companies, uh, but I shall bring it alive for all the industry. I know there are diff people from different industry which who are there here, so I'll try and do that. Now, first, if you look at, I spoke about this, about this digital explosion. You know, everything. Today, the kind of data each of you youngsters generating is mind-boggling. Now, all of us are in a way consumers. All of us are in a way shoppers, right? So we are sharing our information to the world, to the world outside. How do you, how does somebody pick up with something which is important? And I'll try and explain that to you. Now, once you talk about the digital explosion, also, if you look at the financial side of it, and I'm sure there are people from uh, the uh, financial industry, the explosion and the equally parallel explosion of fintech which is happening. Today, uh, Nepal, a country of uh, 2.8 crores population, has 40 lakhs of people who use digital payment at a daily basis, right? That's the kind of a movement which is happening and that's directly linked to sales for the simple fact that the entire fulfillment of sale and what is fulfillment, I'll try and tell you, is happening once the financial closure is happening there. If you look at the shopper journey, you know, we were, when I joined, it was all about traditional brick and mortar shop, right? And some of you, I can see some seniors sitting over there and everything was dependent on the salesperson's ability to in influence the shopkeeper. Am I right? 
So how can you convince the, whether it is a shopkeeper, whether it is a distributor, whether it is even in direct selling in terms of the consumer or the shopper, how do you have one-to-one -one interaction? Today, this is fast changing. The individual ability, it is not that it is no more important, but that ability definition is getting changing, getting changed. And we will talk about that because digital is playing a huge role. If you look at today, the way it is changing from a brick and mortar to uh, today, if you look at Nepal, whether it is Daraj, whether it is Sasto deal, where there are other places also, the way a shopper is shopping is changing, right? Even when somebody is going to a brick and mortar store, in any of the industry, they are comparing that online and going to a brick and mortar store and trying to do their sales call. So hence, the salesperson job has completely changed. They cannot be completely unaware of what is happening in the digital space and be concerned about what is happening in the brick and mortar store. No, the entire landscape is changing. Now, when the landscape is changing, also what is happening that it is nothing standalone. There is something which is called omni-channel, which, uh, which will come to Nepal uh, soon, sooner than later, which is catching up globally, which is, which is catching, catching up in South Asia also. That it is not, you cannot say that, okay, this is a brick and mortar. You cannot say that, okay, this is an uh, online store. One channel is playing the role of everything. So it can be physically serving a, a shopper. It can be online serving a shopper. It can be serving a shopper through cash and carry, and so on and so forth. So it is called omni-channel, where every, every way a shopper is being connected. If you look at today, what this story which I told you about the car sales happened, the salesperson personalized the offer. Am I right? He personalized the offer for my daughter and for me. It is extremely important and that personalization is happening because the ability to understand your shopper is easier through digital operation. You can know your shopper, you can know the trend and other stuff much faster, right? There is something which is called experiential. So it is not that the shopper wants to experience and wants to experience digitally before he or she makes the decision. I'll give you one example. This is one example of, uh, there is no sound. This is an example of Daraz, you know. So this is a sun silk activation which is happening in the Daraz site where the shopper is being on the digital side, the shopper is being given the experience of the influencer and basis that the shopper is making a decision, right? So the challenge and the way to address it is completely different and the cost and the efficiency, I shall speak about it uh, in details in terms of the efficiency, becomes so important because today, a shopper compares, with the help of digital compares, much frequently than what they used to do earlier. Previously, the neighborhood store or the neighborhood shop, which, is, which somebody knows, used to be our go-to place. Today, comparing it is so easy with the advent of digital that the challenge for you people are completely, completely different. I, did, I never faced this challenge when, when I was in direct sales. Your job is much more difficult because you're, you are facing a much informed shopper, a much difficult challenge to handle. What is this uh, prop cock and why is he's not changing?
No. Okay. So what you need to do now quickly, what I'll tell you that as a sales process, how is the, how does it work? And how do you want to kind of a break it in smaller steps? First is the demand capture. For a salesperson, it is extremely important to understand that where is the demand, to capture that demand. And you know, that capturing can only happen, I'm not saying own can only happen, but should happen logically when you are finding out that it is not that it is, you close your eye and go to 10 places or to 10 of your customers and find out where is the demand and serve them. You should know where you are going and where there will be the demand. That brings in that much of efficiency for you. The second point is demand fulfillment. Today, your customers are extremely, extremely demanding in terms of fulfillment. A day late, even an hour late, look at Food Mondays. Look at the people who are doing the Food Mondays business. Even if it is 15 minutes late on, or half an hour late, what do we do? We call up, we question, right? So demand fulfillment is an extremely, extremely important part for the sales system. And digital plays a huge role in this process. It is a complete misnomer that demand cannot be generated by the sales system. Generally, it is thought that demand generation is marketing job and sales job is fulfillment, right? It is a complete misnomer. Now at the point of purchase, and when I'm talking about the point of purchase, it can be the physical store, it can be the digital store, lots of ways the sales system can generate demand, right? And I shall try and speak about it. At the end of it, the people in sales rem remains as much important. You know, the digital, if the digital cannot take away that and should not take away that, it is a combination. It is not binary. It is not, not either or. It has to stay, and we will speak about that. And finally, every time, and youngsters, keep it in mind, the most crucial part in my mind is that building your own capability. If the world is changing, you have to change faster. You have to, you have to adapt faster. You have to understand, you have to almost predict what is going to happen. When I'm talking about you, it is about you and your organization needs to predict what is happening. Today, Unilever globally, we have said a couple of years back that we are extremely, extremely backdated as far as digital is concerned. And we need to, we, we are a fantastic marketeer. I'm, we are being told, I'm, I'm not sure. We have been told that we are good marketeer. We have been told that we, we, are, we are good at lots of other things, must be. We are a 55 billion euro company. Uh, but on digital, we are identified that is our soft spot. As of yesterday evening, I left office at, at 6.30. I finished the third chapter of five chapter digital leadership training program, which I have to finish by next Friday. Right? We have to be ready in order to face that, face this changing world. And my request to all of you is that there are so much available, whether it is in the LinkedIn platform, whether in so many platforms, I can see uh, the, uh, this, this particular platform which we are talking about, it enhances your capability, right? So it is extremely important to work on your capability. Now I shall quickly talk about the demand capture. The first and foremost thing of demand capture is to find out what is called coverage, where do you need to go? How do you find out where is demand? And how do we do that? 
you know i'll give you an example of our own example previously when used to expand outlet uh, so the population i'll give you an example of a population of india so the population of india when it was 90 crores and today india population in 130 crores do you think the number of outlets have remained the same no na in every field the number of outlets have increased if it has increased then how do you find them one way of finding them is to kind of a move around in the geography and if there is an uncovered place in whichever whether it is a, uh, in whichever way then you cover that another way of finding is that how do you use the science and the data and i'll give you an example of the data we know that per lakh population there should be x number of stores in y pop status getting a bit complex so i would say that say in a metro situation say in a kathmandu situation every lakh of population should have 250 outlets right but when you go, go to a smaller town right the number of outlets per lakh comes down right that is the science what we did was that we tagged each of our outlet which we cover through gps so every outlet of ours is gps tagged right and then what we what we do is that we cover a geography we know that this is the geography we are covering these are the number of outlets which we are covering the population of the geography is x ideally as per formula there should be y number of outlets we are covering x number of outlets so there is a headroom or there is no headroom you are you are understanding the way digital is playing the role in terms of finding out something very basic and telling us and you can do it at a ward level you understand ward in the municipality there are wards so and wards populations are also being captured so you can do it at a ward level look at other industry the other industries also can find out if somebody is opening a hotel if somebody is opening a automobile automobile stores right then this kind of a data of the population in that particular geography will tell you where you have headroom and where the headroom is lesser i'll give you a very interesting example post covid how many of you know about google mobility how many of you heard about google mobility okay uh friends uh, you need to kind of a get into these terms and these terms are extremely important so google mobility tells you you know about google maps all of you know google maps so google mobility tells you in a particular geography what is the movement of the people and where all people are going so they are going to your grocery stores they are going to food stores they are going to uh, different other types of stores and so on and so forth they are going to hospitals they are going to post covid we didn't have the ability to bring back our distribution to the pre covid level immediately because we had lesser number of people right in kathmandu what we did was that we looked at the google mobility at a daily level and we found out that which geography is getting more mobility more people are going to the stores in which geography and we decided that okay in this geography we will increase our coverage part we found out it was a fantastic insight and uh, it was being shared with me that the mobility of people in the non kathmandu part of nepal was building faster than that of kathmandu right so the people in pokhara the po people in other places birganj and all they are coming out of covid and moving out and starting their daily activities much earlier than the people who are in kathmandu so we strengthened our distribution 
coverage everything there first put our resources there first and then basis that we deployed 20 years back or 15 years back what we would have done perhaps completely the opposite first Kathmandu the biggest market put all your power in Kathmandu am I right that's logical but we did it completely differently that's the power of digital in sales that is what we need to adapt as a sales system and this is what we call intelligence in expansion it is not mindless don't do it mindless bring in you have information use that information to do it right first when we now once what one, once we said that okay we have expanded then it is necessary for the sales system to understand what should we sell again let me give you an example and i am inspired by uh, my said that fantastic stories telling sir i was enjoying this thing so let me also try and try my hand uh, so in my last role as a general manager of east india as a director of east india i went to an outlet when i first took over and that outlet was so happy that okay a senior person from unilever has come to work in my outlet and all after spending 20 30 minutes what he did you know he picked up a plastic bag and gave it to me and said that ki sir aap idhar ho aap apna sorry i am using some local language uh, because they aap idhar ho to aap apna logo ko bolo to take this away from me this is blocking my capital ye mera paisa block karke rakha hua to i asked them what is this then i realized we as an organization we said that we need to increase the assortment we have to sell more lines we have to sell more products to more outlets what our salesman did was that they picked up one one product of each of our sku and we have 890 skus sku means the selling unit and gave it to the shopkeeper saying that ye mere liye le lo please take it for me and relationship you know the shopkeeper picked up kept it it doesn't sell in his outlet right if you are giving a shampoo conditioner to a pawn shop will it sell but the shopkeeper might say that ki okay bol raha hai pura full year he works with me so i'll keep his word that is the traditional way of selling right now how understand how wrong it is you need to sell the quant the product which sells and generates further order replenishment you know you need to sell basis your replenishment and even your depth needs to be that previously we used to say are we, we we had a sales every sales person any sales person over here who doesn't have a sales target please raise i'll take a photograph i can see others taking my photograph i'll take his photograph so all of us we have target so we force things again that period is over it just blocks capital i'll tell you this is something which we operate as an organization and i'll, I'll give you this example and how it happens you know what it is doing it is churning data in a particular outlet and saying that this outlet ultimately what is the right assortment product and what is the right right quantity we should sell in that outlet and the salesman is supposed to only fulfill that demand today he is not held responsible for how much he has sold he is held responsible for how many perfect outlets what is the assortment right assortment you are you have created in those outlets right and this is fact for everybody would you what kind of a car will you will you keep with your car dealers in a particular geography look at the paint industry right it was a i i have lots of friends from the paint industry and i was being told that 
lots of times the shade the color is been determined by the local like if a mandir in that particular place if a temple in that particular place has certain color then the local person prefer to use that color in that geography right in this way look at the temperature how it changes between kathmandu and say a bordering india some geography would you send the sell the same quantity of seasonal product what you sell in kathmandu the same way you will sell it in biratnagar no and that the digital the data gives you tells you that okay this is what the optimal quantity of a, of a certain product which you which you should sell to an outlet based on his history and certain other external factors right that is what is called intelligent selling that is challenging the traditional way of selling which we are we, which we have grown up right execution i'll not speak much about it because this but this is the most important thing for the fact that just taking order now let me ask you another question what is important and you can raise your you have taken a order today to deliver the order tomorrow you we take order at a certain periodic inter, uh, interval uh, every week say every week or every month we collect order am i right so is it important to deliver it on the next day or is it important to deliver it on a agreed day i'll not start a vote uh, our understanding is that it is important to deliver the order on an agreed day because accordingly to whom you are selling he or she will plan right look at today you the way again i am going back to the car industry and i'm sorry for it the sales people in the car industry and this is my personal feeling not everybody some of them what they do is that they book the order and they say that okay this will be delivered in 3 months time maybe and that then the 3 months can go 6 months and they pass on the responsibility by saying sir mera job to order lena tha mera i mai to i have taken your order and passed it on to the company see now the company is delaying no your job is not fulfilled till the entire process is closed including collecting the money for that order it is not sales is not silo and this entire thing happens the digital can help you you must be wondering what is this map this map is all about when we take orders and we service like in nepal we service almost 55000 outlets you know so every week we have to service 55000 outlets manually it is not possible to find out what is the optimal route for that delivery so the gps tagged outlet the route is being defined that today you have not necessarily every outlet will give order every day right so the gps route defines and tells us that okay this is the optimal route of your fulfillment right this is how a digital plays today in our life every day in and every day out i have already spoken about uh, fulfillment this is what i was telling you about that that cost of delay the cost of in inefficiency in the fulfillment can be really really killing right it can not only create a bad impression for your customers but a word of mouth is important and hence what digital allows you to decide an optimal route or the optimal way of fulfillment which is much more efficient then you have to go and drop during dasai i'll take an 
out of business example during the sai you gift to your uh, relatives so you decided that okay we will go to eight houses today and gift to eight relatives right if those eight houses are gps tagged the map will tell you your fulfillment your delivery what is the most efficient way what is the most efficient route to deliver and fulfill your order that is what is the role of digital in this place, uh, space if you look at now i said this that that this is a misnomer that sales system cannot generate cannot de generate demand definitely they can if you look at this particular example i'll tell you what is happening so in this particular process what you are doing the lady is doing she is making a simple phone call what is happening at the end of the phone call when you do a two caller phone call or a viber phone call what happens at the end of the phone call there is a banner right the banner says ki who you called or from whom you have received the call and there is a banner in this process what is happening is that in that banner when you are putting the product it is also giving giving you a one click opportunity to go if you like the product in this particular case it is font bright beauty if you like the product you click it you go to daraz you place your order and the process is fulfilled right so a simple act of where you catch your shopper a simple act of phone call can digitally lead you to a sales and the fulfillment also has been taken care by the de delivering agency right so that's how you can use the digital so there are importance in terms of in store activation importance in terms of huge importance in terms of shopper analysis the other day in this particular stage i was having another meeting with amun or some of you will know amun uh, he is the promoter of sasso deal so amun was i we were discussing and amun was you know amun was not pitching his sales volume he was saying that i know that for unilever or a company like that i'll be contributing 3 4% of the turnover may not be more what i'm pitching is that the kind of a data which we can give you the consumer profile which we can give you the number of customers which they come to my site and i can analyze and give you that data that data is for me that data is absolutely absolutely invaluable yesterday i had a presentation where a strategy in terms of channels sales channel is been created you know by what i'll again use a term i'm sorry if i'm using some of those terms by so social hearing what is social hearing all the discussions which happens in the social sites whether it is instagram whether it is viber or whether it is uh, facebook and all it can be coded it can it 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 gets there again to the big data and it is analyzed and said that ki okay people prefer to buy your this product from that channel right and it is possible in nepal and it is happening in nepal right what you guys need to, what you all of you need to do is that you need to really understand your shopper the shopper is the king optech will give you right data and then use that data for your sales planning i'll show you one example of an activation which happened in india which is cadbury's it is in public space this is a, a bit of a longish video I'll, i have time another 5 minutes sir okay
so uh, I'll show you uh, this activation and then, then I'll explain to you, understand at what level a digital can move and help a shopkeeper and then pose a challenge to you saying that your shopkeeper, okay, I'll not tell this, I'll first play this and then I'll tell you, I'll explain this to you. Big businesses and brands that suffered during the pandemic found their way back, but the smaller stores still suffer. This lockdown has been a real tough phase of my life. I mean, I have seen bad days, but this was the worst. Last year, we helped small businesses through Diwali. So this year, we decided to bring it back. Presenting not just a Cadbury ad. This Diwali, we helped hundreds of small businesses by making India's biggest brand ambassador be their brand ambassador. This Diwali, you are also in your past wale fashion of emporium. Se hi Empire Footwear. Naam to suna hoga. Apna stylish chashma bagel wale heaven eye operation se hi lena. Siddhi Vinayak Electronics se latest smartphone kharid kar thamma ke dar selfie post karna. Kya kar rahe ho? Meetha laaye ki nahi? Laaye ho na yaar. Apne paas wale roshan kirana se. Aap bhi apna meetha wahin se lena. We used machine learning to recreate Shah Rukh Khan's face and voice to take the local store names in the ads. इस दिवाली आप भी ना अपने पास वाली चॉइस ऑफ फैशन से ही कपड़ों की शॉपिंग करना पास वाले आजकल फैशन से ही रॉयल फैशन से ही एन के क्लॉथ से ही पास वाली लक्ष्मी कलेक्शन से ही कपड़ों की शॉपिंग करना इस दिवाली आप भी ना Different versions of the same ad with local store names were targeted as per the pin code of the viewer, showing them only the nearby stores. But it is impossible to cover all the stores. So we gave the power to the people to create their own version of not just a Cadbury ad. Any small business owner could promote their stores through their own social media networks like WhatsApp forwards and other social media pages. Cadbury celebrations, not just a Cadbury ad. Sir, for, for both of you, this is Mr. Shah Rukh Khan, who is supposedly the most famous uh, actor, if I may say, in South Asia, and the most famous person. There is, before I get into this ad, as a, uh, I'll tell you about this. This particular creative got the titan, Khan's Titanium Award this year. Khan's Titanium Award is the Oscar Award the best Oscar best film award of advertisement. There is nothing can be bigger than titanium. So this particular thing had titanium. And if you indulge me and allow me to say this, I'm sorry, I'm ultimately at the end of it, I'm father. Uh, so my daughter was part of creating this advertisement and she also in the was in the winning team of cancer. <laughs> but anyway, so what it is doing, it is, in short, what it is making Shah Rukh Khan the band, the shop ambassador for each of the shops in different categories. All what you have to do is that go to the site, put your address, put your pin code, put your name, and put your product. And then the neighborhood shoppers, they can, when they are checking for a shoe, what they will find in that pin code is that that Empire Shoe Store's ad will come and Shah Rukh Khan will say, this Diwali, Empire Shoe Store se hi apna juta kharidna. Can you believe the power of this activation? Right? This is, this is what is, if I have to capture, this is what is digital which can provide. And to me, and personally, I'm a near old man, and you people have lots in your future. I think this is just the starting. We are scratching the surface. 
the things will move much much beyond this in the time to come and hence my request to all of you will be this is to me the most important touch uh, most in my last slide and the most important slide on everything keep the people at the heart you make yourself analytic driven guts main sochta hu mujhe lagta hai main janta hu main itna din se ye karte aa raha hu tum mujhe kya sikhaoge very very familiar words in self esteem trust me i have done it i have started as a trainee right and we need to get rid of this and say that okay the data is saying this the analytics is showing us this insight and we need to take that insight and we need the self system i'm sorry for saying this there are self leaders self system needs to be regimented their job is to execute as per the insight generated their job is not to think and create something in kathmandu and completely a different thing in biratnagar and so on and so forth no right analytics should help us and we should be ready to accept that it will be difficult you know at times you will feel that the center of power is moving from me and moving to some idiots who are collecting big big, big data and giving us some insight no they are helping you they are making you much more effective technology i have already said don't don't be afraid of experimenting eight out of your 10 things which you will do will fail my one of my leadership team member is sitting here i keep on telling them that be okay in failing eight of the 10 things will fail you know the innovation percentage success in this world agar 100 innovation banaya jata if there are 100 innovations only 7 are successful rest 93 are failures but those seven apples of the world googles of the world they are part of those seven to make an iphone i am sure there are hundreds of such technology which has failed and so on and so forth so experiments i have spoken so much about technology i i don't want to speak more and my last point is that create partnerships learn from each other here if we count there can be 15 20 different industry people sitting over here learn from the best practices we learned a lot of our sales insight from a uh, mm, paint company i'm sure all of you know asian paints anybody anybody over here from asian paints okay so we have learned a lot because the kind of a assortment they handle you know the paint company the kind of a assortment they handle and they handle it so efficiently and they provide you in such a time is amazing we learn from them right so my request will be learn and controversial my last statement still with pride no problem right if there is something good happening somewhere take it as long as it is in public space right so this is all what i had to tell you this is my small journey and small understanding to all of you i hope i haven't wasted your time i hope i have done justice to the subject matter if not maybe next time thank you so much <laughs> any question all right we have one hand raised we'll only be taking two questions one and anyone else excuse me dear okay hello two. can i get a glass of water one right at the back one right at the front so two question can we yes you have the mic uh hello i am sisir adhikari and Hi. associated with uh automobile and heavy equipment business uh thank you sir for sir for uh, sharing your story of uh, buying a car 
And my question is, uh, in this information technology era where customers and buyers have more and more information about your products and company than yourself, how can a salesperson differentiate himself and his product or company from clusters of other companies and products? Brilliant Thank you. question. Is it possible to put it here? I put it. Okay. Thank you. What's the what's the job of a salesperson or a sales system? The job of a salesperson or a sales system is not to differentiate. The differentiation has to happen for the consumer and that is the marketing job. Here we always make the difference. We always make the mistake. I see some of the time somebody's designation is written as X sales and marketing. To me it is almost like I am riding an elephant and a cow. Can't happen. Sales and marketing are completely two different functions. Differentiating, he spoke about positioning. Differentiating a product, positioning a product, creating a consumer demand is a job of marketing. As a salesperson, as I said, our job is to generate the demand in the right place. The demand is already there. You cannot create a demand for a certain type of electric vehicle in Nepal, You're, you won't be able to. That demand of electric vehicle is getting created at the background by the marketing team and at the background by the present situation where alternate energy is much more important. Your job will be when that demand has been created, then you need to differentiate, okay, there is an electric vehicle demand which is there with this shopper which type of vehicle I should suggest him or her, which will be a win-win between the shopper and the company. So that's your job. That's the job of the sales system. We should, the demand creation is mostly, while I said, I'm sorry, I said that demand creation can also happen in sales system, but the key word is can. Majority of the demand creation happens in the marketing. Your job is to fulfill that demand in the right way to the right shopper, right? Yes. Namaste. You can sit, sir, and speak, not anything. Yeah. Myself, Sarat Chandra Oja, from, I am from a pharmaceutical industry. Okay. Sir, I was going through your presentation. My uh, question is, you, ha you, you as a Unilever Managing Director, you have uh, three different slots of selling your product. One is stores, little stores, big stores like Vat Vatemi, and this, this uh, digital platform. So, would you please share us, so what is the percentage of these three different slots, the, what selling percentage you are getting, or this digital platform is growing at what pace or percentage? Okay, uh, sir, I'll answer part of your question and I shall not answer part of your question. The part which I, which I shall not answer is that what percentage of my sale is happening in that place, that is an internal data I won't be sharing in the public platform. I'm sorry. Uh, what I should say is that this, these are these we call channels of the future. Whether it is Bhatbatini, which is a departmental store, or whether it is Daraz or Sastodin, which are the e-com platforms, those are the channels of the future. Let me give you an a data which I can publicly share because this has been publicly shared. In a neighboring country, in our neighboring countries, in five years' time, those channels of the future from a low single digit today are contributing. So if I take a country like, say, Bangladesh or Pakistan, they will be double digit. And if I take a country like India, 
they are high double digit. So they are exponentially growing. Unilever growth, these are all public data, Unilever growth in e-com platform is all 25% globally. And we are playing in this platform for so many years, right? So for Nepal and for my people, I'll say that you won't, you won't believe or you will not realize six months you keep your eyes closed and you'll see that there has been an explosion which has happened in this channel. These channels are poised to grow and grow exponentially because shoppers are moving towards that. Nepal has a 77% penetration of smartphone and 56% penetration of digital. All of you, be ready. Very relevant question. Be ready. This is the channel which is, that's why we have named it as channel for the future. That will, that will determine us, right? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mukherjee, for this elaborate keynote filled with knowledge and crucial information for our participants as well. I'd now like to inv uh, invite Mohan sir and Samjana ma'am on stage to kindly present this token of love to Mr. Mukherjee for his keynote and Thank you very much once again, sir. We really appreciate your participation and your presence here. Thank you.